Getting bad. <laughs> this is Easter Sunday, 1981, Elmwood, Nebraska, at Donna and Boyd Clement's house, and we're going to try to get a little rundown on history. And Dad, I want to know. I want you to start with uh, Grandpa A.O.'s dad and mother. What were their names? And then list all the ten kids. Give me all those ten names. Oh. Let's see now. What was Grandpa A.O.'s dad's name? Olaf. Olaf. Anderson. Okay, and his mother. I remember it. And then his mother. What was his mother's name? I doubt it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just said my job. <laughs> well, okay, let's go on Don't down. Don't turn your rear end up. Oh. Was I? <laughs> well, Dad, that's on oh. the TV. <laughs> you dumb man. Well, listen, okay, let's start with the ten kids. We're probably going to have to really redo oh. this thing. Okay, name the ten kids. Uh, that granddad, his name was Wolf Anderson. Yes. And then, okay, how many kids were there? And give all their names. Ten, I guess. Rolla and uh, Uncle John and Dad and uh, Peter and Al and Pear and uh, Aunt Annie and Aunt Ellen and Aunt Emma. How many is that? Because I don't know. I didn't have my fingers. Well, you was up there with your fingers and thought you was count. <laughs> okay. Back. Well, yeah. which ones came to the United States then? And First? Yeah, yeah, yes, or and yes. Danny and Uncle Olaf. Well, then who did they come and visit? Or? Hmm? I mean, where did they go when they came to the United States? Who who did they visit? Or somebody had to sponsor them, didn't That I they? couldn't answer. Who sponsored them? Well, but where did they come to? Chicago? Or? I think Chicago. Okay. Did they have any kids? See, did I get them all? You count them. See if we got ten. Okay. There was Uncle Ola. Uh huh. And Dad. Andrew. Mm -hmm. And uh, Uncle John. They were here in this country. And Auntie Ellen. Yes. And Auntie Annie. Okay. Uh, that's five that ever got over to this country. They never. The rest of them never got here. Oh, those five came to yeah. the United States, right? Yeah, and then there, there was Peter and Nels. Pear. Pear. Auntie Emma. Who's the tenth one? That, Emma, did I forget it? Was, was that ten? Oh, I can't count that. Well, you never could. <laughs> True. <laughs> Okay, That's well, ten. all right, well then, the five that came, the others just stayed in the old country, yeah. so you didn't know anything about their kids no. or no. Uh, or children or where they lived or, well, what was the town Grandpa A.O. was from? Oh, that was a little town of Herbie in the southern part of Sweden. In what county? Was it Smolin or? He was, no, no, he was a Skåne. Skåne. That was right on the tip end. He could see Germany on nice third day. Oh, is that right? And Mother, she, she was a small and she'd come over. And she was farther north in the poorer country. Dad was in the best part of Sweden. Oh. That mm -hmm. is agriculturally. Uh -huh. And Mother was further north. Dad come over here and he was about 15 in order to get away from the Army. He didn't want to have to go serve in the Army, so he scooted out of there. Uh -huh. Mother, I think, was only about six months old when she come, her and her mother. Just, just her mother came? Her and her mother, yeah. Well, where was her dad? I didn't know that. Did he die in the old country or something? He must have. Don't really know, huh? Well, anyway, Grandpa came over here, what, when he was 15? Yeah. Then Landed in Wahoo. Well, who sponsored him up at Wahoo then? God, I don't know who sponsored him. Was it only Anderson? didn't have to have any sponsor in those days, as far as I know. Oh, maybe not. And he walked around trying to get a job, and he couldn't talk English. And he, come night, I remember he said, uh, 
and went out into a stack of hay. And, stay, and slept? And, uh, yeah, and dug a hole in the stack of hay. Yeah. And, uh, he was only 15 years old? 15 or 16. Oh. He, got, he, he went left Sweden. He said he didn't want to go to the Army. Yeah. They thought money grew on trees over here, you know. Mm -hmm. And he cried himself to sleep. And he couldn't get a job. But finally, he didn't get a job. Where in Wahoo, you mean? Yeah, I'm Wahoo there. <laughs> he didn't like it there very good. <laughs> For some reason or other. And he rode an old mule there down to Peterson's here at Waverly. Where'd he get the old on mule? On a Sunday. From where he was working. He oh, rode an old yeah. mule. Yeah. From Wahoo. Yeah, so what did he do? 25 then? miles down there and then back. And he got a job in. They hired out for the year. In those days, you know, like a factory, like a slave, see? Mm -hmm. And uh, he, yeah, he hired Dr. Peterson for a year. Which well, Peterson was that? Emil Peterson. Oh, Emil. Or Emil yeah. Peterson's dad. Yeah. And uh, Pete Peterson, I believe his name was. Yeah. And then after he worked for Peterson's. Did he work on the farm then for yeah. a year? Yeah, for a whole year. Okay. Then he went to Omaha and learned the cotton trade. What did he do? He was trade? in Omaha learning the trade when the, that old blizzard of '88. He yeah. said when he walked home from work, he just couldn't hardly find his way home. Oh, he said the old snow come down there bigger than half a dollar. Mm -hmm. Oh, he said. Who, who do you apprentice? Huh? Who do you apprentice under up there? Or how do you? Did he stay with some? friends or something up there, or did he stay with the apprentice? No, teaching? no, he didn't have any friends up there that I know of. He just went up there and got a job and, and went to work and stayed there and he learned to trade. Yeah? Gee. And then he come back to Lincoln and went to work. Now, how old was he then? Oh, I don't know. It was before he was married. Some way or other, he went to some church, and he was going to church all the time. Or in Lincoln, and that's where he met Grandma. That's Hanson. where he met Mother. Yeah. And uh, some church doings, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, he said that he worked some contractor on some of the university buildings. I forget the name of the contractor he worked for. That might come to me after a bit. Yeah. And uh, then this contractor he worked for at the university, one of the big rich guys by the name of C.C. C. Burr, built a big house out there just south of the capital. Mm -hmm. And just the porch in those days cost four thousand bucks, and it was a circular porch, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, this guy sent Dad over. How come? Did, Why? Because he was one of the best carpenters he had, I guess. And I remember Dad said he built. He showed me the porch that was that he built. Yeah. And uh, cost four thousand bucks in those days. That was a lot of dough. Sure. And then he went to work for the, on the old Lincoln Hotel, and he was a foreman there, I guess. He said he was the first man hired and the last man fired Is on the right? old original Lincoln Hotel. The one on 9th? Yeah, between O and P Street. Uh-huh. And that's where he worked. And well, was he, he still single then, when he was doing oh, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then he met Mary, her mother. Well, no, but Dad didn't. But didn't he go back to the old country before he ever got married? Yeah. Well, tell me about that. Oh, his dad used to be a sheriff at one time. In Lincoln? No, no, in the old country. Oh, you, and Grandpa A.O. did? No, Grandpa, his dad. Oh, yeah. My grandpa. Okay. Olaf Anderson, no, that was my granddad's name. He was a sheriff at mm -hmm. one time, but then he would. He, he got a little too, uh, well, he bought too many things. He got out on a limb. Mm -hmm. And by gosh, and they, so they sold him out. So he wrote to Dad and wanted to know if he couldn't borrow some money. Uh -huh. So Dad, at that time, Uncle John was here, and Uncle Olaf, and Auntie Ellen, and Auntie Annie. And he borrowed some money from every one of them. You know, they all saved their money in those days, believe me. And, uh, and every one of them sent some money home. I forget how much. 
But anyway, when Dad got his money back, it was five hundred dollars. So I presume maybe the rest of them said five hundred two for all. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, they decided uh, that Dad should take it back. Uh huh. Uh, so he took the old boat. You know, that's yeah. where they had to go. And he went home, and he got there the day of the sale. What's the matter? My head is. <laughs> You're getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's all there. You know, it's a sale. Yeah. It's, have an auction, sell him out. And Dad, he was there. In the meantime, he'd grow a big, long, old handlebar with Must mustache, you know. And time, I suppose he was probably 18 then. Uh -huh. About two years after he left, and he went back with this cash to help his dad, you know, buy some of the stuff back. And they were going to sell him out. Mm -hmm. He got there at noon out the farm. I don't know whether he walked out there. I know he didn't ride a motorcycle because it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so he went in the house. And his mother was standing by the cook stove, and he ran up and wanted to kiss her, see? Yeah. Had a big old mustache. Yeah. She hollered at Granddad. She said, get out here. She said, there's some broke guy trying to kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess Granddad was in the other room. Yeah. And he come running out there, and he took one look, and he, because he had an idea. He said, Andrew. Yeah, he recognized him. Yeah. Then, huh? Well, and then Dad bought back. He asked his dad what he wanted. He bought back everything he, he uh, wanted. Yeah. Set him up. Dad never got his money. Oh, he's living up on the farm in Waverly. Is that right? Yeah, I can remember. Uh, dad sent him the money. I don't know whether it was. <coughs> I can't remember. It was whether he was still living then or it was after he died he got the money. I can't remember for sure. But anyway, he got some money. Dad didn't want him. He wanted him to keep it. But yeah. He wouldn't. Well, I guess it must have been when he died. Auntie Emma, his sister, was over there. said, no. He wanted to pay him all off. So. <coughs> Auntie Ellen, Dad wanted Hazel and Bessel so their mother was dead. He wanted them to get the money back. Uncle Olaf would, I guess, and all the rest of them. But Uncle John never sent any money. He was the only one who right? didn't send any money. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but Hazel and Bessel wouldn't do it. So none of them sent it back. Hazel and Bessel said they wanted them to have it, so they just kept it. And I think it was $500. Uh -huh. Each one kept $250 apiece. Dad set him up, and then he come back. Dad said he used to smoke a cigar once in a while, and he said when he was coming into the New York Bay on the big old boat. Was this when he came back after being yeah, home? Yeah, after there? being home. He said he took out the last cigar, threw the old box in the ocean, and smoked it, and that was it. That was it. He quit smoking. That never was smoked again. Old work, yeah. He never smoked no more. I don't know. Well, I, but I thought he went back to the old country again. He went back again. twice. Once just before he's married again. I think that was the time he threw the cigar away. Oh, the time, the, the yeah. second time he threw The second time he went over, just before he married Mother. He well, made how, one trip back to Sweden. Just for fun or what? Was it yeah, him? just for a visit, I guess. And uh, that was the golden man. And then how old was he then, do you know? Do you oh, remember? I don't know. He's, I don't know how old Dad was when he got married. I don't either. Well, I suppose we'll have to hunt up some of those dates. Okay, Leo see. was born in 92, so it had to be before that. Well, let's see what year was Grandpa Leo born. Dad was born in 66. 1866. 1866. December mother was 20... born in 1870. And who was born in 1870? Me. 
Oh, you were born in 1870. I said mother was born in 1870. Oh, okay. I was 30 years younger <coughs> than mother. Mother was 30 years old when I was born. I see. I was born in 1900. She was born in 70. Okay, well then, okay. Uh, so we don't really know what year they got married then. They got married in Lincoln or Waverly? Waverly. They were the first ones married in the Waverly Church. The old wooden Waverly Church. Well, is that the one Grandpa A.O. built? The old no, wooden no, one? No, no, no. The one he tore down, that built in one that's there now in 1915 or 16. Finished oh. it up in 16, I think it was. Okay, so they were married, in the first ones married, in the old wooden church. Yeah, they were the first ones married. Well, was that on the same corner? Same spot. That the, old, that the one that is now? Well, the old brick church. Yeah. Not the new one. No, not, no, not older, but That's made over in the park. Yeah. <clears throat> well, what year were they married then? Well, it must have been about 1890, somewhere along like that, 91. Okay, then. Leo you, was born in 92. Leo was born in 92. Really? And then, okay, now let's back no, up. No, wait a minute. I'm, I'm telling you wrong. 94, Leo was born. And Mary was born in 96. And I was born in 1900. Squire was born, Merrill was born in 1906. Then Francis. January and Francis was in August in 1910. Okay, well then, okay, where were Grandpa and Grandma living when Leo was born? Where were they living? Were they up north on the farm or what? Oh, no, no. I don't remember. I believe they lived up in Fontenelle, up north of Fremont. On the farm, right? Yeah, Uncle John and Dad was tried farming for a year or so. Did they just rent a farm up there? Yeah, they just rented a farm. How they could land it up there, I don't know. Then, well, how old, then where did they go? How old was, was Vera born up there too then, at Fontenelle? I don't know, maybe Leo was born. In, I think so. I'm not sure, but one of them was born in Fontenelle. That's a, I've so never that been be to that. I don't want to go up to that dead young town and see what it's like. Yeah. Never been there. Well, okay, so we don't know whether Vera was born at Fontenelle then or not, do we? Well, I'm going to have to ask Francis. Yeah, I, you know what? We really should have had Francis down to do this. Oh, the telephone's ringing here. Hello? Well, Well, Dad, okay, so then when they left Fontenelle, where'd they go? Did they come to Waverly? I think so. They must have come along. I know, but they lived north of Waverly on the farm. Didn't oh, they? yeah, Grandma Johnson had a farm. Well, where was that? Acres of land. That's where I was born. Well, now, where was that, Dad? Oh, that was, uh, let's see, four, let's see, four miles north and a mile and three quarters of a mile and a half west. Of what? Of the road going? Uh, going north out of Waverly. Okay. Who's farm? And then, then Grandma Johnson owned that? Yeah. Well, then what what they do with that farm? I didn't know I that. I think Mother and Dad must have bought it from them. Did they Gra sell it then? Yeah, and then they sold it. And that uh, come to Waverly. But Dad had a hardware store. He was running a hardware store in 1900 when I was born because he was supposed to get home and Oh, she didn't pay much attention to me whether I was showing up or not. Yes. <laughs> he had to stay and tend to business, see, and he yeah. was late. He didn't get home when I was born, and I was just like Topsy. I don't know whether Mother was home or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and what was it? You weighed 12 pounds? And 12, between 12 and 13. They didn't have a doctor, you know, they just hatched them out. <laughs> and and had a, what's it called, a midwife. Yeah, sure. And uh, I weighed between 12 and 13 pounds. That was Mother's first new house. I don't exactly. know what they lived in, but it must have been some old kind of a shack. Uh -huh. But uh, Dad built her a new house on that farm. We did? After he, yeah, and that's where I was born, you see, in the new house. Yeah, but how long did you live there then? Until I was four. Was that the time Grandma threw you out the wagon? Oh, he was from the town one <laughs> day. She had to. Go to town and she had an old spring wagon, you know, a buckboard. Yeah. You know, like they see in the western shores, an old buckboard. And so 
Well, she wasn't scared of the devil himself, as far as horses were concerned, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, she had a colt that had been driven a few times, and she had a, a steady old horse. See? And it was colder than Billy Thunder, and uh, she had me all bundled up and starting town, and the tongue came down out of that neck yoke, you know. Yes. The tongue was just sticking in the dirt, and she was afraid it'd go one way or the other, and it tripped the horse, and the horse would run away. So she thought the best thing to do was get rid of me, and so <laughs> out the ditch I went. And maybe that's what's wrong with me, a bit nutty. And, uh, how, how old were you when she did that, do you well, know? I don't know, I was just a little baby bundled up, yeah. probably a year. Well, then did she get the horse to stop? Yeah, then? she stopped the horse and put up the tongue and then back back in the ditch and picked me up. And those days, you know, dirt roads. Picked me up, but I had so many blankets on. I didn't. Need, I don't know how they even woke up. Well, where was Leo and Vera then? How come she was coming to town with you alone? I don't know. I just don't don't remember why. But uh, anyway, we was going to town. She straightened the rig up, and the time we come, I remember. I can remember this. When I was before we come to town, was four. Dad used to tell me spooky stories, you know. Yeah. About ghosts. Yeah. And mother put me to bed. She had a them great big old wicker clothes baskets and she had all heaped up full of clothes and I woke up in the middle of the night and it was moonlight. <laughs> and I saw that and I said, There's a bear. <laughs> and the bear. His dad told me bear stories. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't even go in that room in the daytime. You wouldn't? Oh, no. That's what mother said. She had an awful time with me. Boy, there's bears in there. Now that was on the farm. Yeah, and I can remember Dad played Santa Claus too up there. He come in with his big old fur coat, and I can remember, you know, that's the only Christmas he he played Santa Claus that I remember. You know, up there, uh -huh. one of my first ones that I can remember. Uh huh. Then we come to town. You moved. Li we you lived with Grandmother for a year. You mean the house where no. I was, uh, where I lived? You mean the old yeah, house? The old house where you kids were lived there. So we lived okay. there probably a year before we could get another house. And we yeah. moved over there in that house where Earl Smith is, lived, you know, across the street from M.A. Carlson South. Okay. And we moved in there a year. Now, who all kids lived there then? Was Squire and Francis born then? No, Francis oh. wasn't born. The Squire wasn't, just Leo, Vera, and I. Okay. And uh, we lived there a year. Dad brought two old cows. The town with it. You kept them right there at Grandma Johnson? No, yeah, Adams has had a pasture and we'd keep them up in the pasture and then bring them home at night. And uh, Topsy and Jane was the name of them. And we had those two old cows in the mill. And, but Grandpa A. Then we, he was building the big house on the farm. I see. And then we moved up there. See, we'd lived in that old house a year. And we moved up to the big house. And uh, about the first of the year, 1905, six, I mean. And then Squire was born there, see, just a few yeah. days later, 14 days after we got up there. Squire was born. And we lived there for a good many years. You know. Till when? Oh, we lived there till. About 1923, and then Dad moved to Lincoln, and he went back into contracting after he went broke. Yeah, don't do that. You know, and I well, tell about it. What, what, well, when did he go broke, or what happened there? Oh, 19. See, Dad run the implement house in Waverly, and hardware store, and sold buggies and furniture and everything you could think of. Yeah, but didn't he sell cars too at that time? Yeah, he took on a Ford. He had a Ford agency. Yeah, and, what, and he sold the Fords, and the, then he sold out the Fords to Joe Reiner, and then he took on the Carter car and the Crit. And, uh, what kind? What we call a Crit. I think it's the name of Studebaker. Oh, he he was selling several cars. Carter car, Mets. And the Mets. And the Crits. Yeah, yeah, but didn't he have the first cars there, Dad? Or if I oh, got no. that wrong? Oh, you're wrong on that. Oh, 
Who had the first car? First right? automobile that ever come to Waverly that was owned by anybody was that, that fellow by the name of Oscar Shore. He was a jurger man. We had a man in Waverly that fixed watches and clocks. Yeah. In those days, you know. And Oscar Shore had the first old two cylinder car, and the name of it was a Glide, G L I D E. And you could, two bolts held the back seat on. <laughs> if you didn't like it, well, it had a seat in this corner and a seat in this corner, and your little door to get in the back end. Well, you got in from the back? From the back. And if you wanted to make a roadster out of the thing, you had just two bolts. Took them two bolts off, set it aside, and you put on the turtle, and then we had a roadster. A roadster out of the thing. And uh, William Jennings Ryan was going to come to Waverly to speak, and Oscar Short drove that old plop, 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 two cylinder, yeah. and drove to Lincoln, brought him back to town, and he gave a speech in Waverly, and I was about knee high to a duck. Yeah. And uh, I remember I went up there to listen to him. I can't remember what he was talking about, but old Snoopy me, I had to be there, you know. Yeah. And uh, they took him back, and we were the last ones to own that thing. Dad traded it. Some fellow by the name of Ward's two brothers had it, and they traded it in for. Uh, for a new car from Grandpa, you mean? No, they traded it in the thrash machine yeah. for a gasoline engine and one thing or another. Dad got the steam engine and the thrash machine and, and this old automobile. And us kids, we run the thing around until we wrecked it, see? And I set out behind the corn crib and it just rotted down. I'd have gave anything if I had that thing today. Gosh, think what that would be worth. Yeah, it was the first one in town and we had it at last when we jumped it. Well, where did I get the idea that I thought the the car to car was Grandpa A.O.'s? That was his first car. That Oh, that was his first that car, but first I car. thought he sold it. He had the agency. The reason he took on the agency, he could get it cheaper. Yes, sir. You know, wholesale. And he owned a car agency in Lincoln. When was, well, when was that? Oh, about 19, 16, 17. Well, no, no. No, it was later than that, isn't it? After 1912, that's right. Well, then I'm getting mixed up. How, how could he have the hardware store in Waverly and the car agency in Lincoln? Oh, he run everything. He was into everything. He Farming went. and contracting and run the hardware store. And he had Oscar Anderson and Nils Buffen and Mother and you name it working for him. And he was doing everything. He was a... Wheeler dealer. Wheeler and dealer, I'm telling you. Trade for... Cows, horses, thrash machines, and you name it. He was a he was a wildcatter. Wheeler and deer, I'll tell you. Well, then was it the car car you learned to drive that you drove up against the tree, or was that Grandma Hale? No, no. Was, <laughs> Dad had this agency in Lincoln. See, we had the car car. Yeah. And he sold Mepsis and. Uh, Carter cars, and he had the agency, and it was in the building at 1620 O Street. That was the. What's there now? 1620. I don't know what's in that building. It's still there. The same building is still there. Yeah, 1620 O Street. That and so he had what? All of these cars. These cars, and he met us, and he decided he wanted this little roadster, and it was spanking red, you know. That kind of a. Cloth windshield with some eisen glass up here about that way. You see, yeah. through. and it was a friction drive thing, just like the old Carter car. And uh, he got it home. We all run out to see the thing, and he went to shut it off, and he couldn't find the switch. <laughs> shut it off, and we hunted and hunted, and we couldn't find it. So we decided to run it up against the post. <laughs> we run. <laughs> We run it up against the post and uh, kill the engine. And we were sitting there eating supper. And I said, I believe I saw a little place where you shut it off. Well, Dad said, why didn't you say something? Well, I said, I didn't suppose that amount of anything. But it was, didn't have a battery. Everything started on the magneto. You know? yeah. Yeah. Didn't have battery in those days, just a magneto. And, uh, Right on the dash was a little crank.
about that long. Yeah. It was a little handle on it, just a little bit of thing. And it was sticking out like that, and right up at the top was a screw. You just push that thing up against the screw, and it shortened it out. Oh. See? And then when you want to crank it, you just pull that crank Turn it on, then go out and crank it. Went out and cranked the thing. It had a wire here where you goosed it, you choked it, you know. You needed to. Oh, that was a running thing. It had 22 horsepower. That's what they call it. 22. It would go like sun. It would way faster than a Model T. It would go 50, 60 miles an hour. Well, good. I didn't yeah. think any car was that fast. Oh, Ford would only go about 45 with a tail wind. You know. but <laughs> this thing would go pretty fast. Because Francis Avere, a fellow out in the south of town, he had bought a big Hudson. <laughs> and he'd come to town with that thing, you know, and he went to go home. So Avere got in the car. She said, going to show him a thing or two. So they got in the race out towards Bray Hall. Yes. We were fast. <laughs> that great big old car. I don't know how much money it come. cost. But anyway, she passed it. She's going to show him a thing or two. How, how old was Vera then? Was she still Oh, she was probably about 60 or 70. Did Grandpa let her drive it? Well, I drove the car when I was 12. We didn't have to have it. Well, you could just get away. I drove the thing all over when I was 12, 13 years old. He let you go downtown and everything? Well, I took the ball team before I was 15, uh, the school baseball team, and went to play. Where would you go? We went over to Prairie Home that time. Oh, clear over there? Yeah, clear Prairie Home. <laughs> and then Bill Carlson, he had a note And he had a car flow. And we come down Adams's Hill. That's about where the overpass is now. We call it Adams's Hill. Yeah. And we got in a race. And I was sitting way down behind, looking through the spokes. I was that little. Yeah. And uh, by golly, he had an Oakland, and I had the old Carter car, and we both had a carload of kids. Dad had caught me a race, and had a wreck. It had been the end of me, boy. But uh, we had a race there. But he passed me. Yeah. It had a little more speed than the old Carter car. It was, the Carter car was too big and heavy. Oh, we used to have a heck of a time. Well, and I don't remember. Then Dad sold out his hardware store in 1915, tore it down. And he built the church. We moved the old wooden church out in the street, closed the street. So we could have a church. Oh. Well, we built a new brick one. Uh huh. And then we got the new one and moved in it. Why, well, Dad bought the old church, tore it down. And that's what the big corn crib is up on the farm. It's made out of Dad's hardware store and, and the church. It is. I didn't know that. Yeah, they had half a dozen new sticks in it. I don't believe. Is that right? It's practically all made out of the old church and Dad's hardware store. Well, how come? Well, I didn't realize that. That new shingles on it, but uh, yeah, that was made out of those two, the old church and uh, that's old hardware store. Well, what year was that? 1917. 1917. 1917. But the house and the barn was built in 1905. But they were all new, though. They, they were was all new lumber, yeah. And by golly, Dad told me that the labor cost on the house and the barn, all except putting the trim on downstairs, you know, uh -huh. was 425 bucks. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Fifteen cents an hour for the carpenters, except when he wasn't there, he had another guy, a kind of foreman, to look after. Uh, he paid him a quarter. They worked ten hours a day, two dollars fifty cents. And they were mechanics, too. They wasn't one of these wood butchers. They were yeah. carpenters. Well, then, did Grandpa sell out all the hardware store and everything, and then is that when he bought the farms up at Atkinson, then, after he built no, the church? No, no, he didn't buy the ranch up there. Well, let's and back up. How come he sold out? Why? Was he just sick and tired of it? Oh, or? I guess he got a good price and he got a he got a three plex up in Lincoln and then he built a new two bedroom story and a half house on the back end of that lot. I can remember helping him work. Wait, up there. yeah, but where was that? I don't remember that. Oh no, that was on the, on N, N Street, I think it was. N Street. 
about 26 in the end. Between 26 and 26. So he traded the hardware store for that then? For that property, yeah. Just traded even up then? Well, oh, I don't know. Oh, I can't you don't know whether he got cash. The financial end, but anyway, he got that. Some salesman got a hold of him and one selling this ranch. See. And uh, he went and mortgaged the home farm. Mother bawled, she didn't want to do it. But Leo, he thought he would really go up there and really raise something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so him and Lad went up. Dad mortgaged the home place. And that threeplex and that new house he had in Lincoln mortgaged it. And, but he got a hold of some crooked real estate. They wasn't supposed to close. Those notes wasn't supposed to come through for three years. Three. Oh. In the meantime, at the end of one year, I guess they started to wanting their money. Oh, so they pulled a fast one on Yeah, they pulled a fast one on him. A lot of fellas told him to take the bankruptcy. Dad said, no. He couldn't meet his payments because it come due quicker than he thought was supposed to. Well, well, I know, but didn't they sign papers then, so he would have known? Yeah, but I don't know just how it was, but, oh, this fellow that took the papers, he went and sold some out to different banks, see, and these other banks won't have had it for a year, and they wanted their money, so they, oh. see, I think that's how it happened. Sold some second mortgages on it or yeah, something. Yeah, and anyway, they, banks that finally wound up with it, one was in Omaha and Dorchester, and and here and there. I think this Elmwood Bank had some of it. An old man Cobb was there. And uh, but if they'd dig up the records here, they'd find that. And uh, so Dad just threw up his hands and let him have it. And he lost everything he had. And he How big a farm was that up there? 1,200 acres. Gee, don't you wish you had that now? Yeah. So uh, if we didn't know there was irrigation water like that, we could have saved it. Sure. But we didn't know there was water, only just a drink. Yeah. And that's where I met Esther. Yeah, what year was and, that? And uh, we got married in 22. And see, well, no, I, but how long did you date Oh, I, I just knew Esther from 1920. She went up there in the spring of 1920, and I stayed up there that year. And then I come home a year and worked around, and then I went back up and in the 22, and that's when Esther and I got married. No, but you met her in 20, and then went yeah. back again. And uh, I hope I spoke as I told that. I said, she's a pretty high-priced daughter-in-law. <laughs> Lost everything he had. You know, Dad was offered $450 for the home place by now, uh, in 1920, by Ole Olson. And, and Dad said, no, he won 500 he was offered 450 for it. At Mike. that time, that had been a lot of money. Oh, he was, yeah. I hope to But then, he lost it in what year, 29? No, no, 21. Well, I, but I thought he lost it in the crash. Oh, no, it wasn't really the crash yet then, was it? What? I thought he lost it in the crash, but that's not no, true. No, no, we had a first, we had a little crash in 21, I'll tell you. Oh, did we? Oh, yes. Before the stock right market? After Right after World War II. One. Well, one. Yeah. World War One. A lot of things went to heck. Heck, we paid dollar sixty-five cents for corn when it went up there, and that fall we got through chucking was worth fifteen cents. We burned it in the stove, rather than buy coal. In what year did it fall that much? In twenty-one. You betcha. We went up there and had to buy corn to feed the horses, and it was a dollar sixty-five cents. And that fall, when we got some raised, it was worth 15, 10 and 15 cents, 10 cents. So we just used it in the old pot belly and stove, burn it to keep warm. Yeah. And Esther's all we got out of it. <laughs> oh, work. That owed ten thousand dollars, but he didn't have a, nothing but the clothes on his back. Furniture, that's all they had. Yeah, so then. And Esther and I, mother and dad, lived in the farmhouse. I rented it. And you rented the farm yeah, from them? Yeah, we lost it. I rented it. From who? Who owned, Who bought it? Then? Who didn't own it? Everybody. 
all these fellows that had mortgages on them. Well, they all owned it, so that's who you rent it from then. Yeah, but the big guy was well, by the name of Horosik, he owned a big bank in Omaha. I forget what the name of this thing was. What was the name of that? Horosik was the big shot of it, big bohemian. Well then, okay, so were they... Were then mother, they, we lived over the one year. You and lived then, there with Grandpa and Grandma yeah, one year? Yeah, one year. And that's where Esther learned to cook from Mother and bake the rye bread. Uh-huh. And they moved to Lincoln and uh, started build houses. They built 640 South 33rd, and they lived there. Vera and Jack, see, Dad, Vera and Jack called it there, but I think Mother and Dad was in on it with them. I don't uh -huh. know how. And they lived a year, and then Dad went over and bought some lots, 35D. Yeah. And he built 3509, lived in it a year, and he just built 3501 and he sold 3509 and he built 1110 on the back end of that lot. Yeah, I remember Then that. he went to 640, no, 635 South 36, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Built a house and then he went to 33 and them and that was his last one. Well, I don't know how many new homes mother and dad had. Well, it was everyone, she had it just like what she wanted. When she got it built and moved in, it wasn't the way they wanted it at all. And she said the last one, 3300 M, was going to be exactly like she wanted. And she didn't get it. That little bedroom yeah. was too small. Yeah. That was the last new home she had. So no, but then how long did you and Mom live on the farm? Until 1928. Sold out on Valentine's Day in 1928. Well, then I was four years old. Did I live on the farm four years? Donna, too, then? Yeah. You little snobs. Well, then you just moved to Lincoln, then. Yeah. Yeah, Dad said I better learn to trade and live with. Yeah. Yeah. I said, oh, I didn't want to. I wanted to be an old sod buster. But he thought I better learn something. So I went up there and spent the whole life till 19. Where, in Lincoln, you mean? What are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, I went to Lincoln then and worked with the dad and all the rest of them to learn something about construction. Well. Then in 19, dad died in 48 and I stayed there till 1950. Yeah. And I come back out the farm. I, you know, I had the 80 first and sure. the moon lighted. Yeah. Worked that all night for suppers and Saturdays and Sundays. And then in 50, I finally got out of business on January the 1st, 1950. I got everything wound up and I got out of there. Squire took it. Yeah. Oh, oh, hey, I want you to go back and tell me about you and Squire riding horses. Or what oh, was that? Was <coughs> yeah. how, how old was Squire? Or what were you doing? I can't well, remember. Well, Squire was about, well, I don't know, how old he was, 15. See, that was the first year we was up there, 1920, and he was five years younger than I was. He was about 14, 15. They had some cattle out in the big pasture, see. This old cow come home. We had a lot of hogs, cattle. This old cow come home, and we knew she'd had a calf, and she didn't have it with her. So Leo said, you better get on a couple of nags and go out there and hunt that calf. And it was rainy. Missed me. <laughs> had one old, boy, had one. Didn't really have a good saddle horse, see. But that one of them was kind of fat, and I said to Squire, I said, you can uh, ride Ted. He's nice and fat. But if you want me to ride that skinny old horse, <laughs> I said, I'm going to have the saddle. I ain't going to ride on that old rib bone. <laughs> so I put the saddle on this old driving nag that's skinnier and all, get out. We went out and we rode and rode and rode and we couldn't find that thing. So we come home. So we had a board fence, you know, 
couple of planks about two feet high. Yeah. So the cattle could hop over. The hogs had to stay in. See? Right inside of this board gate was a big old mud hole full of water. Squire said to me, he said, I'll show you how a horse can jump that. So he started his horse on a dead run and he ran up there instead of him a leaping over the old horse. Just and he tried it again, and the horse stopped. He would step over, but he wouldn't have jump, see? Yeah. And by golly, and this mud hole was about six, eight feet from the gate. <laughs> I said, get that old nag away. I'll show you, I'll show you a haul, how a horse can jump that with this old skinny man. And here I come, and she wouldn't gallop. She just trotted. <laughs> and she would run up to the fence, and, she reared up like that, and she caught her two front feet on the board. <laughs> just went over like that. And brother and her, I looked up, and her old tail was a coming, and I looked old spread like that right in the mud hole. And boy, when I seen her old tail a coming, and boy, I just went <laughs> and squire. He liked to fell off the horse laughing. He thought it was funny. There wasn't nothing funny about it, me. Boy, I'll tell you. Oh, <laughs> and squire. He used to tell that whenever he got down to some place, you know, a bunch of guys. He'd tell about this, you know, how yeah. I we was trying to, oh, we had a lot of fun, Squire and I. Squire and I was always a little closer than Leo and I. We played ball together and all that. Uh oh, time. yeah. I pitched and he caught. And yeah. I don't know, we, we always played together more. And, uh, well. <laughs> oh, I have to tell you something fun. You know, we was kids. Dad had. Squire, well, cultivating corn. I had two young mules. This cultivator took three horses. He had these two mules and one horse. And he was coming home for dinner. You know, he had a hitched over there at noon. And we was farming. I was somewhere over there where our lady is there. And coming home at noon, he was standing up in this spring wagon. You know what a spring wagon is? Sure. Putting it like an old buckboard, you know. Yeah. Had springs on it, it's a bouncer. And a car passing, scared these young mules, and they started running away. And Joe Hamlow lived there where his folks were, were cruising, the cruises were there. Were. And those old horses and mules were just coming as hard as they could run because the car scared them. Mm -hmm. And in those days, cars could scare horses, they didn't know what they were all together. And so old Squire, he turned them into Joe Hamlow over there. And there Joe was just a little shaver. And Joe was standing there looking at him, and the horses come right at him. And so he started to run. And he just barely got out of the road, and one of the mule's legs hit Joe's. Is just, that right? Oh, just, just come that close to running over him. And they hit a bounce, you know, and the spring wagon hit a hole or something, and it bounced. And Squire just went a sailing out of there, yeah. and he lit on an old hen and <laughs> killed it. <laughs> Boy, and away with the teeth, you know, running around over the farm. Yeah, I let the Squire lit right on this old hen. <laughs> hen was trying to get out of the road too. And Joe and Squire lit on this hen. My God. Well, well did, Joe did tells he, about that to this day. Well, he remembers it then. Oh, Joe, yeah, you ought to hear Joe tell it. Boy, he was he was running for a dear life, and just one of the horse's legs hit him. He just pretty near got out of the road. Standing up in the spring wagon on that sure. springs on him, and it hit something that bounced, and the old squire just went sailing on. And he lit <laughs> on this old hen and killed it. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, God. Oh, we had some awful time. Oh, we used to have some. But we got clear away from the subject of relatives here for some reason. Well, yeah. How come? Well, I don't know. I just was talking about the family. You're telling me things. Oh. That's fine. That's what, what we want to do. Let's see. I don't know. We, did, we stopped talking about the year Mother and Dad got married. I don't know what it was. They must have got married about 92. And Leo was born in 94. They must have gotten married about 92. Yeah. Well, 
then did you and Vera and Leo and everybody go to school in Waverly then? Yeah. Oh, Vera and Leo, they, their first couple of years in school was uh, up at the old Jordan schoolhouse, you know. I don't know where that Three, is. Well, I'll show it to you someday. It isn't there anymore, but there's a little graveyard there. They see they had a church and a schoolhouse and, they, and a graveyard. Well, where was that? Uh, up Three north? miles north and, and a half a mile west. Of, what, of Waverly? Of Waverly, yeah. Yeah. See, Mother come to Waverly when she was 11 years old. Well, where did she come from? Well, her mother and her lived in Lincoln. And, uh, and they, because, see, mother had an uncle. Her mother's brother run a blacksmith shop in Waverly. Who was that? John Berg. Oh, John Berg. Okay. He was the second man to come to Waverly. The first man to ever land in Waverly was a man by the name of Green. And then John Berg come to Waverly, started a blacksmith shop. And uh, then a few years later, mother and her mother moved away. Really. Then she married Grandpa Johnson, and I don't know where in the Tom Walker he come from. And all I can remember is that house after later on, it had all the medicine on the shelf. Oh, he lived on medicine, he called it. Medicine? Yeah. He always says, I gotta take some medicine. <laughs> Then he'd want to come up and help me a little bit once in a while, and then after he'd worked a day or so, he had to take care of Grandma. She was an invalid. Oh, goodness, he said, I feel just like I went through a corn shell. He said. Well, he must have come from Sweden then, too. Huh? Oh, yeah, he come from Sweden. Now, that was who? John? John Johnson? Mm hmm So you don't really know where he came from, or? He come to Sweden, but I don't know where Grandma Johnson met him. No, that was her second him. husband. Right? Yeah. Well, but see. We all let's see. And then Grandpa John, when Dad had the hardware store, he worked in the hardware store oh, for Dad to fix and harness and shoes. Dad run the harness shop too in there. Grandpa John, he done all the fixing harnesses, you know, for yeah. the farmers. Yeah. And, uh, that kind of stuff. He worked there. He was the harness man. Mother worked in the, in the store. Oscar Anderson worked for Dad in the store, and Nels Buffman. And he'd make me and I come home from school out of a little spurt, take a big old feather duster and dust the buggies off. Yeah. Uh, then he gave me orders. Yeah, all of us kids had bicycles. Bicycle. I had the privilege to had an order book, you know. Yeah. I had charge of running everything for the bicycles. They needed new spokes. Yeah. Rubber tires. So on my bicycle I got all the high class stuff. I put down motorcycle hand grips. Yeah. And all that kind of stuff. Get them on there and have to order. Put them on my bike. <laughs> No, Dad, he gave me a little shotgun. I wish I'd never traded that shotgun off. He gave me a little twenty-two rifle and I wasn't much bigger than John. Oh, I got so much bigger. And then that little shotgun is like a ninny. They don't even make them anymore. They're out of style. Smaller than the 410. And I wish I'd never traded that. And I wouldn't give it to Rex. I tried my best to get it, to find out where it is. I'm still going. Twenty-one. Dad lost the place. No, but you were graduating school then, though, weren't you? Who, twenty-one. You, yes. You had graduated from. No, you didn't graduate from no, high school. I was going up to Ag, and I, I had my draft card, class one A. Yeah. So I figured that's where I'd be. Out of place in the army because all my buddies were gone but I hadn't called me and I couldn't figure that out and then the thing was over before they got to my number.
Well, I never went back to school then, because I figured I'd be on the road to France. Yeah. Well, see, you went to Waverly through the eighth grade. Yeah, Waverly through the eighth grade. And then went to the Ag College. And then went to Ag College two years. And then the war was going to pick me up, see. I had my draft card, A18. Yeah. And two years of ROTC, and I knew I wouldn't be in this country very long. That much. Two more. years ROTC at the Ag College? You yeah. did? Well, I didn't know you went to Ag College two years. Yeah. I thought you only went about one year. Oh, so. Well, then did you got kicked out. You know, I was taking chemistry. Uh, and we went to chemistry lab, you know. Yeah. And they had to line you up alphabetically order. So my last name was A. So the old druggist down the way really told me how to do it. Yeah. He said, when everybody gets their fire going in chemistry, you know how you used to melt glass when you were first starting and all that stuff. He said, you get everybody gets to going good. He said, you want to have a little fun? He said, just put your mouth over the jet, you know, the little pipe come on. Yeah. He said, shut yours off, see, and get your mouth over the jet. And then you open it up, blow some air in it real quick. And he said, when you get yours back to fire again, get to work. And he says, and that old air to go down the line, put, put that guy to fire up. Another one, <laughs> put, put another one. And I was having a big time. Remember the lab we had, you know, about putting the fires out. See. One day the old professor, he just figured there was something going on. See. He just went out in the hall, hit behind the door, and I thought he was long gone. And I had my big old mouth <laughs> over that thing, and he came back in. <laughs> that was the end of me. And I didn't care. I didn't want to be a, I didn't care about chemistry. So uh, he sent me over to the old superintendent, Harry E. Bradford. He said, let's end the you here, boy. I got kicked out of chemistry. He said, um, well, you got your choice. You can take farm machinery or poultry. So who wants to mess with poultry? <laughs> and I said, oh. I said, I'll take farm machinery. I know all about that. Thought I did. <laughs> I went to first class. And the old prof said, uh, now one semester practically gone. So, you know, starting the second semester. He says, the problem for tomorrow is to figure out how much an 18 inch moldboard sulky plow, how much horsepower it takes to pull it. Boy, my old hair just curled. I thought, holy smoke. I'd have to go clear back to the front of the book, you know, and learn all the formula. I was stumped. I said, well, why didn't I take Pol poultry? They couldn't figure out nothing like that <laughs> on an old hand. <laughs> How much it power it took to lay an egg, really. <laughs> By golly. But I liked it. I got to go along pretty good with that stuff. And I had to take blacksmithing, carpenter work. I made a joint one time. That was funny. You know, what they call that a joint? I can't remember. A Morris tenon joint or something. And uh, it was a crooked thing. And I had to put these two pieces together and get it. You know, I thought I had it pretty good, see. And I thought I'd make it a little better. So I took a little more off. And holy smoke, I could see the whole world through it there, man, that joint. And... So I poked it full of sawdust yeah. and uh, spit on it, tapped the sawdust in that joint. And boy, then I wiped it all off and I sandpapered it. Boy, it just looked like it grew together. I took it up to the old prof to get a grade on it, put his old opticals on there, turned it over, and gave it a hit on the desk, you know, a heck of a rap, and boy, all my sawdust fell out. <laughs> He said, here, go back and make a note. <laughs> Holy smoke. Oh. You ever make one of those things in woodwork? You ever take woodwork? Never did. Yes. Didn't mount the hill of beans, you know. <laughs> Making joints, you know. Those things. 
And I took blacksmith and learned how to weld. Did you? Yeah. And I pretty got kicked out of that because I played hooky. One day went ice skating on New Year's Day, I think it was. Well, why would they have school on New Year's Day? They did. We, I tell you, we had a kid from over in Iowa in the same room in the house I was in. His name was Carpenter from Plays Iowa, and he was kind of crippled. And we coaxed him to ride on the bulletin board out in front of the Ag Hall, mm -hmm. class's excuse for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs>